This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. It was just what were your overall thoughts for, for tonight's win? You know, uh, I thought we played really, really hard. I thought we played very connected. Uh, we wanted to get to the to the ba basket and points in the paint. Fifty two points in the paint is a is a large number. I thought we did a really good job rebounding the basketball tonight, and those were two points of emphasis coming into the into the game. Um, thought we did a good job not settling uh, from the perimeter. Uh, bench play was excellent. Uh, Jalen Graham's. Uh, had great matchups tonight, and and he certainly capitalized big time uh, from an offensive standpoint. And then I thought Jalen did a really good job on the glass with seven boards and two block shots. So uh, overall, really, really good performance by a lot of guys across the board. Um, so, you know, happy, especially, you know, we, we've talked a lot about how historically we've been so good in the second half. And for whatever reason this year, we've, in the games we've lost, we have not been good in the second half and 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 what's the reason for that cuz we're talking about the same things that we have for for 7 years and and uh, tonight was a step in the right direction uh, playing better in the second half coming out on that 17 to 2 run which that's a that's a hard thing to do out of out of halftime to come out and defend at the level that we did in the sec to start the second half you know, against Texas A&M, you had a halftime lead evaporate quickly in the second half tonight. A lot of people have Texas A&M. <laughs> I don't think they've lost an SEC game. And we look, the A&M game, we played really hard. Neither team could score down the stretch. It's not like they were, you know, scoring at will the last five minutes. I mean, it was it was a, a real defensive physical battle. And we missed some foul shots. And uh, that team is 10-2 and two going into tonight. Uh, and we went on the road against them and Baylor and we gave ourselves a chance, but we, you know, we didn't win the game. Um, you know, the game that, that, that I felt, um, you know, we should, we, we didn't play well enough against uh, Mississippi state, but the Texas A&M game, our team played and gave everything they had and we, we didn't win the game. Um, and, and that, that happens when you're playing against a team that's 10 and two and hadn't lost a, a you know, an SEC home game. So, uh, but a good bounce back game for us, for sure. Um, you know, so. Coach, you gave Nick the start today. He had 32 minutes. Just just curious how you would assess his play, and then how important was it just to to get those minutes for him and, and just the continuity with the other guys on the floor? Yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, as a coaching staff, you know, we tried to be, be – we tried to be prepared. Um, we try to have a reason for everything. We don't just uh, – you know, we don't just roll the dice out on lineups and – and substitution patterns, uh, you know, we have a lot of non-contact practices uh, for eight years now. Um, we have catapult numbers where the guys wear catapults and you can distinguish uh, their energy, the jumps they have, how many miles they go in practice and that all those numbers go into effect on all this stuff, how we sub, um, we knew when Nick came back, it, there's, there's, uh, there's not a high school player. There's not a college player. There's not an NBA player. There's, there's a reason major league baseball, when guys are out extended periods of time, send them down to the minor leagues, uh, to get their rhythm and their timing. So we certainly felt, uh, with a basketball team and a program that does not go live, um, and hasn't gone live. And it's because we want to be fresh in March. And, uh, and so it's, it's hard for Nick to play three on three post-practice and get rhythm. So, uh, really happy that he got the minutes that he got tonight. Um, happy how his teammates responded with him and he gives us a little bit of an edge. I mean, he's competitive and, uh, he's verbal and I think that helps us tremendously. On the flip side, you brought Ricky off of the bench and, and he had 15 and seven for you just Curious how you thought he responded to that. I, I assume well, and, and just your thoughts on what got him going tonight. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a scorer by nature and certainly felt like uh, he came in with the right mentality. Uh, I mean, I'm old and old school. Um, we had uh, everybody but two players here way, way, way earlier uh, than report time tonight. We never have anybody late. I mean, 
being up, being five minutes early is late for us. I mean, we have never been late for buses, plant, nothing, practice, not never, ever, ever. Um, but sometimes guys come in, you know, five minutes, six minutes before report time. We had a lot of guys here real, real early. And I can tell you that Nick and, and AB were here really early. I can tell you Ricky was here really early. And so we talked at the 70 minute mark or 80 minutes before tip off that, you know, Ricky's approach showing up that early, knowing he wasn't going to start. It didn't affect him at all. Um, and that's what you want from a player. I mean, we're going to, he, he knows the confidence that we have in him and, and uh, he, I mean, he played 32 minutes and he deserved to, and you know, that's, we need him to play well. Um, how, how this lineup goes, I got to dive into Georgia and, and, and look at matchups and, and see if we're going to keep it like it is, or if we're going to change, or, I mean, all those things, I think with, with where we are right now, they're still to be determined how we, how we go into, you know, certain games. Looking at Makai's double, double, along with the numbers that Graham put up and, and then your backcourt, is this the most balanced offense you've had in a game since maybe San Jose state, that was your one game where everybody was available, but it, it kind of seemed that way. And yeah, I want your I, thoughts. I think, that, uh, I think the flow offensively, Kevin was really good. I thought the, the defensive, uh, connectivity was really 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 good tonight i mean there was there wasn't a lot of clean looks for um you know for for florida and you know quite frankly you know they made four out of 21 from three and and two of them were on me I mean, you know i made i made the decision that 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 uh 13 we were not gonna really guard out there because of uh lack of lack of experience um and so in in reality our team the guys in the locker room gave up two and I gave up two. Um, so I thought that the following the game plan, defensive rebounding, all those things, really, really good. Uh, the, the, the six blocks, very important for, from a rim protection standpoint. We're, we've been so good blocking shots all year and, and that continued and, you know, getting eight steals instead of two or three. I mean, we need that activity from a defensive standpoint as well. Anything in particular impress you about Jalen in terms of having so much offense run through him? I thought he looked pretty patient on a majority of his post. I thought he, I thought he was great. You know, um, you know, he's he's a really good passer too. So, um, I think some teams at times can be a little bit reluctant to double team uh, JG just because he's you know he's got a really good feel. Um, you know, and I thought he had great matchups for him to guard tonight. Uh, and then when, you know, I mean, if he, if he plays well defensively and blocks two shots and, and rebounds like he did tonight, certainly he's such a gifted offensive player. Um, and, and we felt like maybe his, his foot speed was, was, uh, was you know, was, would, would bother, uh, 33 a little bit and bother 13 a little bit and, and, um, you know, wanted him to use his shot fakes against fudge as well. So. Coach, you mentioned how hard it is to come out of halftime and put together something like a 17 to two run. Just what actually allowed you to do that, that hot start? Yeah, I just thought our defense was, was, was elite, um, you know, to start the second half. And then we were able to get out and transition a little bit. And I thought that the, uh, the easy baskets in transition certainly uh, helped us tremendously. And then, and then, you know, defensively, you know, we didn't give up one back door. And Florida's a heavy Princeton backdoor team. So, you know, we spent, you know, the prep time on no backdoors and no threes. I, I don't know if I've ever coached a team that just – we gave up none on a team that's a high-volume backdoor team. And as I've mentioned, the, the guys in uniform only gave up two threes um, out of 19. So um, the two areas that were the, the, the biggest emphasis, they did a phenomenal job. Eric, I think you guys start off two for nine, and then after that, you shot nearly 70%. What'd you think of the slow start, and then what, what got you guys going, you know, to where you were shooting so well? Yeah, I don't want to think about the slow start um, because it was painful. Um, you know, we couldn't we couldn't buy a basket. Uh, but, I, but I also think that, you know, you've got to put it in perspective. I mean, you know, Ricky Council's been one of our premier scorers. Uh, he's not in the starting lineup. Um, you know, so I think that, you know, it was to be expected, you know, the, the changing of the lineup, uh, tonight, um, 
you know, maybe, maybe it was going to take that group a couple extra minutes to, to get in the flow and feel comfortable. And then after that, like I said, you know, practically 70, not 50, but like almost 70%. Yeah. I thought pace of play, sharing the ball, not forcing shots. We ran a little bit more, uh, well, you know, we were able to run our man offense and, and, uh, you know, we were able to, to find the mismatches that we wanted. Um, you know, we, we probably ran 17 or 18 different sets tonight. Um, we executed them really well. And, and, um, you know, when, when we're able to, to do that, we're, we're pretty good. With Nick getting so many minutes and, you know, I know it wasn't his best game, but, you know, he, he got 10. He looked, he looked like he had good bursts moving around. What, what do you expect from him now moving forward here these last few games? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that this game is, is uh, you know, is, is in, was important to him to be able to get, um, you know, 30-plus minutes. And, and uh, you know, we have a big game coming up on Tuesday and, and two, you know, Big games on the road, and then, and then a big one at home. So every game right now for for the Razorbacks is 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 you know important, and him getting a little bit of rhythm and flow, uh, it's it's a lot different than playing three on three. This was kind of an, I'm sorry. Uh, this kind of you talked about this kind of normal Super Bowl games. You really couldn't afford to lose to these guys at home. Just and you won. You know you were up by twenty five at one point. Just how good did it feel not just to win but to win you know, convincingly and, you know, kind of feel good. You know. Yeah. I mean, I thought we were flying around. We were, we were, uh, you know, diving on the floor, getting loose balls. The guys were having fun. They were competing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it was really important. And, and now the, you know, now the, the, the level of maturity coming back and, and understanding uh, how well Georgia has played and, and, and how improved they are and, and understanding that, you know, Roberts is a is a is a really good score and understanding that, that Bridges can really score with his back to the basket and and uh, Aquindo is a is a, is one of the best transition players in the SEC. So we we got a lot of things to go through uh in a short amount of time and getting ready for, for Georgia and this game's behind us and now you've got to focus on the next game on your schedule. Coach, was this a game that you knew coming in that you might be able to lean on Graham more than usual, or was it something you realized, you know, after you got into the flow of the game? No, we – I mean, I didn't know what he was going to do, but we were going to go to him early, which is what we did. Uh, and we threw it in there, and, and a lot of it was was, was matchups. Um, you know, and, you know, Fudge is a younger player, and, and uh, you know, 13 had, has not played much, and, and 33 – uh, we just felt like Jalen's footwork would 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 be a problem for them. How much is it just matchups, or is it just you know in order for him to kind of put you know back to back games together like this? Is it matchups, or is it uh, do the other things rebounding, defending things like that? I, I think it's all encompassing. You know, I mean he, you know he went two for two from the foul line. That's huge because he was he was batting three three three. Um, he had a heck of a batting average um, at the foul line. So. Uh, you know, I mean, it's everything. It's it's close games, making free throws. It's uh, rebounding your position. It's it's. Uh, I mean, offensively, you know, Jalen is you know, and he's and he's got a great attitude too. He just he just uh, we need him to rebound because because in this league, every night, I mean, the 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 rebounding is is so so vital. Um, but he's done a great job working. Um, I've been I've been on him about the free throws uh, pretty hard, and 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 I thought he did a good job tonight converting the ones he had. You know, we didn't even ask you about Anthony. Maybe we're just so conditioned to him filling up the box score. What did you think of his game? And and then after that, what, what you know, Makai had a double double. What did you think of his game? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Anthony Black, phenomenal. I thought that the steal in the backcourt late in the game, he's starting to get a lot lower defensively. That's that's something that we've talked about. Uh, you know, I, I I brought up the the catapult numbers. You know, the last two days have been his highest in in probably two months as far as he's really working defensively because um, because he's, he's an elite defender. Um, we just need him to get a little bit lower. Um, and I thought his ball pressure at half court was probably the best that he's that he's had all season long. And I thought he played offensively uh, competent as well. I, I, I like the shot selection, his ability to draw free throws attempted. Um, and then and then Makai did a did a phenomenal job as a rim roller. Did a great job being in the dunker spot, having his hands ready to catch and flush. 
uh, on any dump off passes. So, um, you know, his, I mean, his plus minus, you know, really good and, and, uh, and his rebounding really good. It seems like going back to Kentucky, Makai, maybe Mikel taking, stepping up and taking some mid range shots. Seems like AB is taking some mid range shots and they're having a little success. Is this something y'all are talking about? Uh, if the defense is going to play off, even guys, if it's not necessarily their comfort zone, going ahead and. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, maybe at times we've been a little bit reluctant to take open shots, and that actually hurts your offensive flow. Um, you know, all the analytics guys will tell you that a mid-range shot's the worst shot in basketball. You know, the good thing is they don't, they're not on our staff. And, and uh, you know, when you're, and and most of those guys, by the way, have never, uh, dribbled the basketball, called a timeout. Um, you know, when you grow up, if you're over the age of 55, the mid-range shot was the best shot in basketball. And that's, you watch old NBA games and that's all people shot, you know, and, and uh, a 15 foot wide open shot should be a good shot. Again, regardless of, 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 uh, of what those guys that went to high academic institutions that are statisticians or whatever you call them. All right, so we'll turn it over. Take a question on Georgia real quick. Um, before that, you said a bunch of guys were here early. What what is report time today on a one p.m. tip? Yeah, we're a, we're a little bit uh, earlier than most people. It's an hour and thirty five uh, before. An hour and a half is usually early. Um, I mean, we had guys well over two hours here early, and we had you know we 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 met this morning at nine. Um, so obviously, you know, the report time, uh, you know couldn't be here any any you know later than 11 20 or whatever it was today and uh and we had guys well before 11 i promise you talking about reporting to the arena the locker rooms yeah. butts in the chairs yeah. not yeah. walking in yeah i guess, I guess or on the floor preferably yeah i guess george is playing alabama tonight so that's an easy chore for them but um well this is gonna be your second uh, Saturday, Tuesday turn, but the first time you did was back to back road games. Now it's back to back home games. How how different is that? Well, I think when you when you eliminate the travel, it's 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 better. But I, I mean, I, I mean, these guys are so used to playing AAU games where they're playing five games in a day, and and uh, you know, they're not a big deal. Then. I hope not. Okay, and well, hopefully, it'd be better for you not having to travel. But and then you know, Georgia, obviously, they they had a horrible year last year they're much more competitive this year what what have you seen from georgia what do you think about the job mike mike white's doing i think mike mike's done a great job um phenomenal job their players look like they're having fun uh hill's giving them giving them a lift uh at the guard position uh you know they they went out and got six transfers those guys have all you know they, they've contributed um you know, Moncrief's a, an athletic player that gets off the floor extremely quick. And and uh, I mentioned Bridges with his back to the basket, with using his left hand, once in a while using the right hand. Um, on that right block, he's really good going middle. Um, and then Roberts is is a guy that can, can really, really score the basketball. And Akindo, uh, probably the biggest recruit that Coach White had was, was, was getting Akindo back after he was in the, uh, in the portal. Um, so, uh, Bridges and, and, and Akindo, two guys that, that obviously played for coach Crean. And, and then, and then you add in the fact that they did a good job in the portal of getting guys that play extremely hard and, and, uh, they've, they've done a, they've done a great job. I mean, you look at the total wins, um, they've won some big, big sec games and, and, uh, you know, I think he's done as good a coaching job as, as anybody in the league, quite frankly. Eric, I know Florida didn't have Castleton today, but what, what were you most encouraged by on the defensive end? And then how might you bottle this and, and take it into a short turnaround? Yeah, I mean, I've always been under the belief that each game has its own identity. And, and um, you know, the the magic dust from tonight's not going to not going to be sprinkled into our uh, bloodlines uh, come come Tuesday. I mean, it's every game's got its own flow. Every game's got you know, three runs. Can we control two of the three runs? Uh, we're one of the best. I mean, we every time we do a prep, we talk about how good another team's defense is. And I told our team earlier, today, like everyone's talking about our defense too. I mean, we're our defensive numbers are phenomenal. And and uh, you know, I thought we did another great 
job defensively and and uh we're gonna have to we're gonna have to guard georgia a team that'll get out and transition and like i said they have guard play they got guys like um you know abdul rahim that can make threes coming off the bench and and uh so we have our work cut out for it online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season everything from the nfl and bowl season to esports you'll find the latest odds team matchup info player news and game trends at bet online Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. We're the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B L E A V. Bet Online, where the game starts.